Fox Business Alert. Stocks continue to rock, and with the Dow's modest advance today, it is now close to 8% this month. So setting the stage for what could be the best September performance in more than 70 years. And keep in mind, this is historically the most problematic month for the markets. Not that other scary one, October. Economic numbers have looked good, but they have looked good before. And inflation's been in check, but it's actually been in check for a while. And mergers have been coming back, but they've been back for quite a while. So what's new here? This growing Democratic mutiny over extending all the Bush tax cuts. The more piled on, the more the Dow's gains have piled up. A connection to Jonathan Honig, Tom Belisis, and Carolyn Heldman. All with me now. Jonathan, your thoughts on that? Well, Neil, of course, many factors affect the market, especially given all the intervention that government has, has provided in the last couple of months and couple of yeah, years. Yeah, but I'm going with this one, flows. Jonathan. I'm just well, this play has along, a factor, but... and I think that, you know, there's no question that the fact that many politicians, even those on the left, are reconsidering the tax, hike, tax hikes, I think is a positive trend, a longer-term positive trend. I chuck it up to what, you know, you could call perhaps the Tea Party effect. Um, but even the president in the last couple of weeks has attempted to appear a little bit more pro-business. There's no question that longer-term that is a positive effect for the markets and for the economy as a whole. Tom? Well, I, th I think the effect of monetary policy is uncertain. And I do believe right now on spurring economic growth, you have to cut capital gains tax to spur e uh, economic activity and fuel job growth. I mean, what if this uh, likely extension doesn't get extended? I think you're going to have a retraction in spending from businesses, which is going to... What about Wall Street? Uh, Wall Street, too, is going to retract because, again, at the end of the day, they don't know what the rules of the game is. I mean, you have all this cash in the books and no one wants to spend. Why? They don't know the direction of which we're going in terms of the economy. So it's a direct correlation where if you cut capital gains and you keep taxes low, people are going to spend, which is going to spur economic growth. Caroline, what do you make of this? Well, Neil, I think it will be very difficult for the Republicans to get the 60 votes that they need in order to extend it for the top 2%. I do think that the middle class tax cut will go through, which will directly stimulate the economy because what we're missing here is demand. The reason that companies are stockpiling is that there was enough slack uh, yeah, but what for if they them don't to need not it in do the Senate? You're hiring. right, getting the 60 votes, are, uh, by the way, for either party is difficult. But uh, they got to complete this and sew it up in the House. And, and now we've got 40 Democrats who say no way. So this thing's dead unless they've changed something, isn't it, Carol? Well, I, I would hope that it is. I mean, I'm, I'm definitely opposed to it. And if it does pass now, it will be made possibly permanent. No, no, no. What I meant, Caroline, I'm sorry I wasn't clear. This idea of not extending the Bush tax cuts on the rich is dead because the votes aren't there in the House to, to, to put a nail in the coffin. Well, you know, that's quite possibly the case, Neil, but I'm looking uh, more closely at the Senate where I think it will be a harder battle. And unless uh, Democrats capitulate in some late electioneering and pass it for the top 2%, and, um, I would be shocked if, if it passed in and, the Senate. And, Neil, they haven't. And that's, I think, that was haven't changed. Even if these tax cuts get extended, which it doesn't look like they will, the Democrats' main philosophy, basically, of redistribution of, you know, as the, the gentleman earlier on from the, uh, from the VC firm, taking from the rich to give to the poor, that still remains at the center of their economic policy. So even if the tax gets get extended, that hasn't changed one bet. Bottom line, he seems to be saying, don't get your hopes up. You know what? He may be right. All I can tell you that... He's not a movie star. <laughs> you are. <laughs> all I can tell... He's going to be at Wall Street 3. <laughs> yeah, sure. You know, Neil, all I can tell you is that recent studies like today in the Wall Street Journal say that you've got to keep capital gains taxes low. That's how we're going to fuel... Didn't you hear of venture capitalists? They don't matter. Well, listen, they do matter because, you know what, people want their money for themselves to spend in their business. They don't want the government controlling their money. And that's how we're going to spur economic activity in this environment. All right, take a break here. Crude, rude, and lewd, but say this of Carl. He's got Andrew tied up in knots. This whole uh, tax debate may be tossed to a lame duck session. At least that's what a lot of you think. According to our Kabuto web poll, 82% of you do not see a resolution happening before the midterm elections. You can still vote by logging on to foxbusiness.com slash Cavuto and weigh in on this. Meantime, 23 years after declaring greed is good, Gordon Gecko is back kind of saying greed is, well, it's still good. In the Wall Street sequel, Wall Street, Money Never Sleeps, the attack on money-hungry Wall Streeters never stops, this time featuring our very own Tom Belises. Take a look at this. I just don't think it's a risk our debt should be taken right now, that's all. I'd wait. Wait? Yeah. Wait for what? Your beam me up Scotty hydrogen fusion deal? Well, now you're talking about something else. United Fusion Corporation. Stan, come on. It's apples and oranges. Oh, really? Yeah. 
You mean the deal that we already sank $50 million into, Mr. Brainiac? Alternative Energies, what biotech was 15 years ago, Stan. Come on, you were young once, you know that. Profits are not quarterly, the runs could be huge. We'll all be dead by the time your nutty professor mixes any money. Like this coming from the guy who said Google was a bubble. <laughs> Tom scared me. <laughs> could the movie end up hurting the image of all these Wall Streeters with some of the damage done by this rich Wall Streeter? In other words, you play such a convincing part that you reinforce the image, oh, they're all like that. Well. Oliver's a great storyteller. Oh, it's I'm, Oliver now. Oliver Stone is just Oliver. And remember, <laughs> it's a story. It's a classic story about, you know, greed, uh, good just versus Just like JFK evil. was a story. Well, yeah, well, yeah, you could say that. I mean, betrayal. I mean, with a list of strong characters like you have in a movie like Michael Douglas, you know, coming back and reprising the role of Gordon Gekko, Shia LaBeouf, Josh Brolin. I mean, all these list of characters make it for a great movie. But I haven't seen the whole movie. I've seen the clips, so I think I'm an authority and know more about this than you do. Uh, what I'm getting is a sense that we're back to the greatest good stuff. Um, these Wall Streeters really haven't changed since the 80s they're, they're still the same despicable bunch no not at all really? you know, it's you know is I think, your character despicable um, the character portrays what you know the backdrop of the economic meltdown okay you know we all had a role in to fill the character for that specific so Oliver role. Stone never pulled you aside because I know it's Oliver too, <laughs> but he never pulled you aside and said Tom um, you know no offense to your crowd, but they killed us. No, not at all. I mean, yeah. Oliver has said that, you know, Wall Street's a great engine for capitalism, but, you know, some people found more money in speculation, you know, and you used that in the backdrop of the movie. That's why it made the movie so great. Right. You know, and remember, Oliver's father was a stockbroker. He worked till he died, doing what he loved. Yeah. So he wasn't he was bitter broker. and taking it out. Absolutely not. All right, Jonathan, what do you make of that? Well, Neil, I'll reserve comment. I haven't seen the movie. The buzz so far isn't that good, despite, uh, you know, the, I know it's a very fine performance. But Tom I, I think it's hard brilliant. to say that. Tom, you're I know looking Tom at a future Oscar winner. Excellent. He's the star <laughs> of the movie. Exactly. But I mean, honestly, Neil, this is a guy that is Oliver Stone, not Tom, who pals around with Hugo Chavez. I mean, and he, Tom, he digs up and the old. He, well, he, and Tom, but, you know, Stone digs up the old tire cliche that Wall Streeters are evil, that they're out to get you, that they're crooks. He puts a new soundtrack on it for the 21st century, and this is just the same old tire cliche. This is old wine in new bottles, and I'm sorry that we never see businessmen de depicted in a heroic sense, not as the evil, nefarious, uh, 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 evildoers. And, you know, Carolyn, I, I know Tom. I know I want to follow his career. He is a good guy, and he does look out for his investors and he's not sort of this money grubbing shallow SOB that I think you might be portrayed as in the movie. I hope I'm wrong. <laughs> but I, I'm wondering if that voice the image again that that's more typical on Wall Street. Carolyn, what do you think? Well Neil Neil, I, I think that he's telling the truth about what happened in 2007 and 2008 and he's telling it probably in a complex way if it's anything like his previous movies and I hope that the American public learns an awful lot about derivatives What do you mean he's telling it in a complex way? Did you see JFK? Well, There's you know, a whole I, generation like the of kids who grew and, and, up thinking that's what happened well, he provided a, many different angles, though, as he did with the movie W, which I took my students to, and my more liberal students oh, thought there, that it there's was just a, a conservative piece. You took him to see W. Well, of course. I take him to okay. see all political movies that I possibly can, and I believe that he tells it in a more complex fashion right. than simply just painting them with a broad brush. Although, in this well, instance, this does paint I don't with know a what broad other brush, brush you this could paint them with. with a broad brush. Right, right. right. Because I assume, I assume this movie has a long section about Barney Frank, about the Community Reinvestment Act. You probably got a whole hour do just on Fannie and Freddie, oh, right? come on. No, do they criticize you know, you politicians? Can't, you can't blame the government for increasing liquidity in the market. Right, well, I don't the care greed, about liquidity. I don't care about time the movie starts. <laughs> do they criticize politicians or just kind of no, sort I mean, of make you guys the people? criticize, you know, the part of the system that failed the people. I mean, you know, so, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, what Oliver puts together is a story. I think that it's so cool you can keep calling him Oliver. Yeah, yeah. I, really so we, I mean, we built a great relationship. I mean, making a movie is like going to war. So when you make then a movie let me answer with a couple cast personal members. Questions. I well, hear that some big name talent from CNBC, that's all I'm going to say, had speaking roles in this movie. In fact, they came in to read script. I was not asked, although I'm told, I'm told <laughs> that yours truly. Uh, they, they pulled audio from some of our newscasts here. Could very well be anything, things that I did. I, I don't know if it's Cavuto or your world's on Fox News. And I was told there was more, but Tom, here's the Fox News alert. For aesthetic reasons, Oliver Stone 
cut me out. <laughs> That's true. I heard for aesthetic reasons. And since you and Oliver are like that. How dare he? How dare he is right. How dare he? Have you heard that? Neil, I have not heard that, but I mean, to cut you This out could of affect the, movie, the I mean, crowds that show up. I mean, yeah, I agree. So he never pulled you aside and said, no offense, Tom, you're talking to Neil. I, I would no sooner have him in my movie than a man on the moon. No. He never said that. Never said that. I think he did, and you're no. just not saying because you don't want to hurt my feelings. No. <laughs> um, Jonathan, are you offended by that? Well, Neil, I'm not offended around the movie. I wouldn't want to be in a movie. I think it's... Yeah, damn it's right. You're damn time. right. I don't want to be well, in that I, movie. I think it's sorry. Yeah. The people who slip... <laughs> The people who slip capitalism throat, capitalism's throat, Neil, it's the businessmen. With all due respect to Tom, it's the yeah. businessmen who stand up, who allow themselves to be betrayed as that money grumming Thank SOB, you. as you said. Thank you. I will not star, this Mr. Belisis. was a lot of fun making. Oh, please, please. Caroline, are you, <laughs> are you despondent I'm not in the movie? <laughs> I'm a little upset by that, Neil. You Understood. know, I would have loved to have seen you make your movie star debut. <laughs> yeah, well, it didn't happen. So, Oliver Stone, I don't care. I still love Tom. <laughs> you are useless. Bye. Bye. See you tomorrow.